My hero is in Bard Kingdom Brunel. When you mention the name Brunel, second most respected Britain, a man who is known for bridges, railways, ships, tunnels, but not for Whatcom near Torquay. Here at Whatcom was his retirement home to be. The sadness was that he died too young, but nonetheless he spent about nine summers here supervising its construction. This booklet, Brunel's Hidden Kingdom, excellent title, on the back cover it says when the land was being sold in 1903, the site selected some years since by the late Isambard King de Brunel as embracing all that nature could yield by way of climate, purity of air and magnificent scenery. 12 years in creation. We've got the house here which was built upon the original foundations and the cellars. So the house was built after Brunel and making notes in order of this booklet he was generous with his staff. He had 50 people working here to sculpture the gardens and plant the trees. He wanted others to enjoy his efforts, his castle in the sky. One of them was to be a member of the landed gentry as a result of his money attained from the fortune that he amassed from fame of building the structures in the south of England. And he told his head gardener to have the liberty of admitting any person to view the grounds. And this spirit of generosity lives on because here the property is now owned by a Christian fellowship. It's free to enter. It's a hotel. Meals are served at reasonable price, same with accommodation, and people can just come in and walk around and look at Brunel's garden. Brunel believed in the power and comfort of prayer, and he wrote this in a letter. So we're in a spiritual place, echoing the reputation of Isambard King of Brunel. One day he was travelling from Tynmouth to Torquay, surveying a lot of his railway line, he left the line at Tidmouth, crossed the river, and he travelled in his carriage. And he had it stopped at Watcombe where he could see the beautiful view. And in 1847, he purchased the first parcel of land. And he was buying fields and land, straddling three parishes. 136 acres of land it totaled in the end. And he'd be down here every summer. And he would rent Watcombe Lodge at the bottom of the hill. And it was fully staffed. And when it was sold in 1857, the Brunels moved uphill and stayed at Portland Villa across the entrance of this manor. He designed the gardens. He chose the plants. He had 50 employees to clear hedgerows and there was cartloads of peat being brought in to prepare the ground for tree plantations and he purchased rare species of trees from around the world and some of them are called chili pine, turkey oak, Corsican pine, Chinese juniper, Atlantic cedar, Monterey cypress and a lot of these trees still remain stood today that he had planted. He designed the garden, he stated where the trees were going to be planted now still here today And his son, Henry, said that his father's happiest times were walking around his estate, pushing his father in a wheelchair, Sir Mark Brunel. It's noted that Brunel was a kind employer. He contributed towards the rebuilding of Church St. Mary. And he was a bit of a conservationist because he drove away the idea of the proposed gas works. And in 1850 he engaged a firm of water engineers from Pimlico, London for the irrigation and for the supply of water to the house. There was a lake and seven wells. He had trees built down at the bottom of the hill which is south of here as a barrier from the storms from the southwest. 
he had a pond and steps and what you see in this video is we pan the camera left and right very slowly you've got the pond you've got the circular balustrade and you've got the terracing to the right of the camera when all this was designed and was sculptured under Brunel's supervision and he was influenced by his visits to Italy to influence the design of this garden with its balustrades. The plans at Bristol University of the house show that some of the rooms inside the hotel today are exactly to the Brunellian design. And it was an active family home because their house comprised of workshop, nursery. 1855 saw the building of the cellars and the foundation. He paid £10 for Great Hill, which is northwest of here, and it's the highest hill in Torbay. Purchased this off the Admiralty. And Church Road, Church House, and barn cottages down at the bottom of the hill here. The view's now obscured by the high trees. That's where he built cottages for his employees. And there was a school featured in the scheme to supply an education to his workers. And when Brunel died, his widow and children completed the school in 1875. It was given to the local church. And we can finish this video by just echoing the timeline from this booklet. Brunel buys the first plot of land at Whatcom in 1847 and writes on Christmas Eve about engaging Alexander Forsyth as his gardener. 1848, road closures are negotiated in order to create the estate and 50 local men employed to prepare the grounds. 1849, Whatcom Lodge is rented as a West Country base for the Brunel family. Brunel's first records his trees and there is a photograph of him and his wife sitting facing away from the camera looking over Torbay with his typical high hat on. 1850 the Simpsons of Pimlico are engaged to install a water supply. 1851 Brunel sends his Whatcom estate workers on an all expenses paid holiday to London to visit Great Exhibition the staff are paid and all their expenses, so he was a very generous employer. He builds land at Barn Close to provide homes and house and a chapel for his workers. William Byrne draws a plan of a mansion at Whatcom, which is similar looking to this. This is a Victorian house built from 1870. 1852, Brunel plants his shelter belts of beech trees right at the bottom of the hill. 1853, Whatcom Garden Book states sketches and measurements of some of his trees. This is Brunel's hobby, designing his garden. The Brunel's host in 1853 a lavish party for their estate workers and 70 children from Mary Brunel's school at Barton Wall built between Steps Lane and the Turnpike. 1854, seven wells dug to supply waters to the house and grounds, planting of many trees along the seawalk. 1855, Brunel inquires about Prudham's stone for the building of his house. 1856, George Martin, quantity surveyor, paid for work in connection with the proposed house at Whatcom. 1857, the Whatcom Estate expands as Brunel buys more land. 1858, Arthur James meets Mr. and Mrs. Brunel, planning and setting out gardens. But wait for it, this is the sad part. 1859, Brunel knows he's terminally ill. He commissions Dawson to draw up a map of his estate so it can be sold. There was initial difficulty in selling the estate because it didn't have a house. But it was sold 
and the house was built in 1870 and it is a marvellous experience to be standing here knowing that Brunel and his family spent the happiest days of their life away from the pressures of the engineering career retreating to Whatcom and you're looking at the original terraces of his garden which Brunel designed and he supervised his gardener and his cohort of 50 workers and the steps, the architecture of the stones of the steps here. And if we turn the camera and we keep turning it and we face south, downhill, we finish the video knowing that in Brunel's day those trees in the middle didn't exist so we would have had an unimpaired view of Tor Bay. Brunel had a, an estate that faced south, enjoying the max amount of sun pushing his father, Sir Mark Brunel, around the ground in his wheelchair with three children, his father and his wife. And these were the happiest days of his life. As I said, the sad thing was he didn't live here. He died far too young. But I'm hoping that this video will encourage any Brunel scholar to want to see the domestic side to Brunel's life. This is Michael Turner, a great scholar and respectful student of Brunel signing off, hoping that you'll come to Whatcom just north of Torquay.